Hi, I'm Jason Duro. I'm a fantasy author, and today I want to talk about how I write consistent and engaging character arcs. First, let's talk about what a character arc actually is. When you read a book or you watch a movie or a TV show, the story that you follow all the way through is usually the central plot. For a fantasy book, that might be that there is a mystical artifact that has to be recovered and brought to the forces of good so that they can triumph over the forces of evil or something like that. It's usually very externally action-oriented. It's typically about an external conflict or an external event that's happening. In a romance, it might be about two characters that are trying to come together and form a relationship and have conflicts they're trying to overcome along the way. Or in a mystery, it might be that there's a detective who's investigating and narrowing down suspects and finding clues in order to solve a crime. That's what the main plot arc is all about. I myself am a very plot-heavy writer. I like designing complex stories and putting together uh, stories that have a lot of foreshadowing and setting things up so that eventually readers get some twists and turns that are hopefully surprising but inevitable feeling to them. And even as a plot-heavy writer, a writer who really focuses on plot, even I feel like the characters are really the most important part of any story. Without the characters, you won't have anything for the reader to really grab onto or identify with, and the characters are the reader's entry point into the story, so having characters that develop and that are engaging and that can grab your readers, that's an essential part of storytelling in general. The way that I develop my characters to be engaging and relatable for the readers and something that really pulls the reader into the story is by paying close attention to the character arcs. And character arcs are something distinct and different from the main plot arc that we were just talking about. Sometimes the character arcs can follow along the same line as the main plot arc. They might be parallel to each other, but they still are separate and distinct things that exist independently of each other. As an example, with the fantasy that we were talking about, where the the main plot arc might have to do with finding an artifact to help the forces of good overcome the forces of evil. The main character in that story might be going on that quest to retrieve that artifact and bring it back, but the character's character arc might be something like that the character begins the journey unsure of herself. She is insecure and doesn't believe in her abilities, and by the end of the story her arc will have taken her to the point where she is confident, she believes in what she can do, and she has developed in that direction as a character. And that follows right along with her quest trying to get this artifact and bring it back. And it tells two stories that are interwoven with each other, but are definitely distinct arcs that are separate. So you might ask how I decide what the arc for a given character is going to be. That's a great question, and I have a very specific and definitive way to determine that. I myself am an outliner. I outline everything before I write. I plan it well ahead of time. And I know a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just write as they go. So what I'm talking about here is what I know. I know how to plan ahead. I know how to outline. And that's where my methods come from. And in order to find the right character arc and make sure that I adhere to it throughout the writing, I have a series of questions that I ask myself about my main characters, and I write down the answers and keep a log of those that I use. The first question I ask is, where is the character at the start of the story? And I answer that in a very literal and physical way, as well as in an emotional and internal way. So the answer for this fantasy character might be that she lives in a bustling city and she works in a clock repair shop. But the other answer that's the emotional one is that she maybe lives in the shadow of her older brother who died as a hero in the military, died defending the realm. And so she believes that she will never live up to his standards, she'll never live up to the deeds that he did. So that's where the character starts. The second question that I ask jumps right to the end. It asks, where is the character at the end of the story? And again, that's in a literal physical sense and in an emotional sense. And the answers to that maybe could be that the character is traveling to deliver the artifact after finding it and uh, she's bringing it to the military so that they can use it to defeat the forces of evil. But emotionally, she has gone on a journey and discovered that she has unique abilities and unique value that she brings to the world that takes her out of the shadow of her older brother and she realizes that she doesn't have to live up to his standards, that she is enough on her own. So that's where she ends up at the end of the story. The third question that I always ask is, 
what does the character need in order to be fulfilled, but they don't realize it yet. Because every character has some intrinsic internal need that will get them from the start of their emotional journey to the end of their emotional journey. And for this character, it's that she needs to get out of the shadow of her older brother. She needs to value her unique abilities. She needs to value her skills and what she brings to the world and needs to see that in herself in order to be fulfilled as a person. And now the fourth question is, what does that same character think incorrectly that they need in order to be fulfilled? Because there's a lot of interesting stuff that can happen with characters if they need one thing, but they believe they need a different thing, and we get to watch as readers as they travel from that point of self-deception to a point of realization where they realize what's really going to fulfill them. And as an example for that fantasy character we've been talking about, maybe she thinks that she needs to follow exactly in her brother's footsteps. She needs to be a fighter. She needs to go into the military. She needs to sacrifice herself and maybe actually die in order to fulfill the expectations and the shoes that she's trying to fill to match up to what her older brother set as a standard for her. She believes that that's what she needs, but she's wrong. What she actually needs is what we wrote in number three, and she just doesn't know that yet. The fifth and final question that I ask about every character is, how do they get from here to there? And by here to there, I mean look back at the previous answers that you wrote down, and how do they get from question number one to question number two, from the start of the story to the end of the story, both physically and emotionally? And then also, how do they get from that point of self-deception to that point of self-realization? Those are the two things that we need to map out and figure out in order to answer question number five. And for this character that we're talking about as an example. For the first one, maybe in order to physically get her where she needs to be, we outline and sort of map out what her quest is going to be, what the steps are going to be that get her out of that clock repair shop in the city to wherever this artifact is to recover that on her quest and bring it back to the forces of good. And emotionally, Along that way, she will discover that she has some things to bring to the journey, to bring to the quest that were not things that were skills that her brother had. This will also take her to that point of self-realization from the point of self-deception. Maybe there's something that, as a clock repair person, there's something mechanical that she needs to do along the way that doesn't depend on fighting or self-sacrifice. It's something that only she could do, and she is able to do it, and it makes her feel fulfilled, makes her realize that she has value that she can bring. So you look for those points where you can pull the value out of the character, pull the unique traits out of the character, and really use that to push the character forward from one point to the other, and you write down how that's going to happen. It's usually about a paragraph long that you write down for the answer to number five, and that's a really important one. So you want to do a good job of writing what takes them from one point to another for number five, because you're going to use that later. Now, after I've done this process for all of my main characters, I take the paragraph that I wrote for the answer to number five at the end, and I stick all those together into a separate file. I use Scrivener for it, but you can use whatever you want to use. You can use Word, or you can use Google Docs, or whatever you write in. But I put it into a separate page in Scrivener there so I can see it in my hierarchy, and I leave it open in a little window thing above where my main draft is when I'm writing. And as I'm writing, before I write each scene, I will, since I outline, I know which characters are going to be in that scene, and I look back at what their overall journey is supposed to be. I'll look at the paragraph for each of the characters that will be in that scene, and I remind myself of what their journey is supposed to be, where they're coming from, and where they're going, and what they need to do to fulfill fill themselves and take themselves to that point of self-realization. And then when I'm writing, I try to make sure that in as many scenes as possible, optimally in every scene, I am pushing each character in that scene farther away from where they started and closer to where they need to end up. It may not seem that way as I'm writing it. It may seem like they are failing. It may seem like they are backtracking. But really what I'm doing is using that paragraph that I wrote about them as a sort of guidepost to point them in the direction they need to go, and I make sure that their story pushes them in that direction. That's a great way to make sure in each scene that you're making progress on the character arc and getting the character developed every step along the way. 
So that's how I write consistent and engaging character arcs. It's all about planning at the beginning and being very intentional with figuring out where the character starts and where they need to go. And then as I'm writing, I constantly look back and remind myself of those guideposts and those destinations and those origins so that I can constantly be aware of and very conscious of the character's journey. And I implement that all along the way. So that's how I do it. How do you build your characters? Do you have any processes like this? Or maybe you're not a planner. Maybe you have a different way that you develop your characters. Let me know in the comments here. I'd be really interested to hear. And as always, if this video is helpful, please give it a like and always hit that subscribe button so you won't miss my upcoming videos.